University, Istanbul, Dr. Ahmed Bailey, presenting clinical evaluation of coronally advanced flap with or without acellular dermal major graft of complete root coverage for the treatment of multiple gingival recessions with thin tissue biotype, a randomized controlled study. Please deliver your lecture. The chairman and colleagues, good afternoon. Thanking the organizing committee for this important meeting in this amazing city, I'm going to present my research done at Edith University about clinical evaluation of coronal advanced flap with or without a cellular dermal matrix graft for the treatment of multiple gingival recessions with thin tissue biotype. Native land from Asian and beautiful capital of Azerbaijan, Baku, where two weeks ago we hosted a magnificent show of Eurovision Song Contest 2012 at Crystal Hall, Baku, and Lorraine from Sweden got first place. As we all know, recession was defined as the displacement of the gingival margin apical to the semitonal junction, leading to root surface exposure and undesirable aesthetics with hypersensitivity. Complete root coverage has been a long-standing objective of periodontal plastic surgery, aspiring to restore the patient's function, comfort, and aesthetics. Multiple root coverage procedures and combinations have been developed and improved with various modifications over the years to attain complete root coverage with high predictability of these procedures in Miller class 1 and 2 recession types. Coronal advanced flap is one of safe and predictable surgical procedures for the treatment of Miller class 1 and 2 recessions with high success rate and aesthetic results. Aiming to obtain complete root coverage and aesthetics, coronal advanced flap with connective tissue graft is the most predictable and the gold standard procedure for single defects and effective and predictable technique for multiple defects, providing significantly greater degree of root coverage, gingival thickness increase and keratinized tissue gain. Previous studies reported that a cellular dermal matrix graft demonstrated similar results with connective tissue graft for the treatment of recessions and could be used as an alternative, eliminating well-known disadvantages. ADM was used with degrees complications, with good color compatibility, also for gingival thickness increase. Gingival thickness was reported as an important and significant factor associated with complete root coverage. 0 0.8, 1.2 millimeters were associated with more predictable prognosis. Also, thickness less than one millimeter can jeopardize the achievement of complete root coverage. For our best knowledge, there is no study evaluating ADM for the treatment of multiple recessions and thin tissue biotypes. Therefore, the aim of our study was clinical effectiveness of ADM combination with coronal advanced flap on complete root coverage and aesthetics for the treatment of Miller class 1 and 2 multiple recessions with gingival thickness less than 0.8 mm. Our study was designed as parallel, randomized, controlled, including 12 health non-smoker patients in each group, with multiple defects equal more than 3 mm. Eight weeks before the surgery, we took periapical radiographs, performed initial periodontal therapy, and prepared occlu occlu occlusal acrylic stands. At the day of the surgery, we took intraoral photographs and intraoral measurements. After two weeks postoperatively, sutures were removed and supragingival plaque control was scheduled with periodic intervals until the end of the investigation. At 12 months, we took clinical measurements and intraoral photographs. At the defect site, clinical attachment level, recession height, recession width, Keratinized tissue and gingival thickness were evaluated. We measured gingival thickness at midpoint location between gingival margin and mucogingival line using endodontic spreader and digital caliper. No toothbrushing of surgical area were explained to the patient for 14 days. For infection and pain control, antibiotic, analgesic, and oral rinses were prescribed. For all statistical evaluation, the patient was the unit of the measurement. Patient satisfaction score, root coverage aesthetic score, and correlation between gingival thickness and root coverage were also evaluated. 
Now I'm going to present you the very representative case from the test group with the patient with multiple defects. Following the local anesthesia, trapezoidal fat was designed. A split, full, split thickness flap was elevated, allowing for a tension-free coronal repositioning. Later, the root surfaces were conditioned with 24 at the gel, two minutes, to remove the smear layer, and then rinse with steady saline. ADM was prepared to, according to the manufacturer's instructions, being aseptically rehydrated 10 minutes in steady saline. Exposed root surfaces surrounding bone were covered with the graft and stabilized with 50 <laughs> resorbable resor sutures. The basement membrane site was placed in contact with bone and root surface. Flap covered with the graft, flap covered the graft and cement and junction completely, <coughs> being stabilized to the depetalized papilla using 50 non resorbable sling and interrupted sutures for the vertical incisions. The same procedure was performed in the control group, except the application of the graft. After incisions and the flap reflection, root surface were conditioned. Flaps were moved coronally and sutured. <coughs> As the results, this is the root coverage achieved in the test group after 12 months. <coughs> and this is the root coverage achieved in control group after 12 months. Baseline clinical parameters were homogeneous in both groups without any significant differences. In both groups, statistically significant differences were observed at 12 months compared to baseline data regarding all parameters. Full mark plaque and gingival index remained low and stable over evaluation time, not affecting the graft and the results of both groups. The amount of recession reduction occurred parallel to the attachment gain without any substantial changes in PD, having <coughs> healthy silicosis less than 2 mm, without bleeding or probing. The significant increase in gingival thickness and in keratinized tissue might be due to the use of ADM and integration of the membrane with the overlaying flap. These findings are in accordance with the previous results reported in the literature with the use of ADM with uh, coronal advanced flap or CF alone. Intergroup differences were found to be significant in terms of attachment gain, recession height reduction, gingival thickness, and keratinized tissue thickness gain. Root coverage in, uh, in 10 patients in test group and 6 patients in control group achieved complete root coverage. Even if complete root coverage was clinically significant and 33% more in favor of test group, it was statistically insignificant between the groups. There was a significant correlation between gingival thickness and root coverage percentage at 12 months. Also, there was no difference between patients' overall satisfaction with either procedure. Patients rated the test and control group equally in all aspects, except the comfort during and after the surg surgical procedure, the cost effectiveness in test group, and hypersensitivity in control group. Root coverage aesthetic score was significantly higher in test group. As the conclusion of our study, tissue thickness significantly increased with the use of graft. Better aesthetical and clinical improvements were achieved with ADM graft combination. The higher the gingival tissue gets with the adjunctive use of ADM, the high percentage of complete root coverage is achieved in Miller class 1 and 2 multiple recession defects. And before finishing my presentation, I would like to thank my program director, Professor Dr. Sergio Dumas, Dr. Shernan Dirka, and my colleagues from our department for their support in this research. Thank you for your attention. I would like to thank you, Dr. Ahmed Bailey, for your presentation. And if there are any questions from the audience, they are more than welcome. I have no questions. I would like to ask you.
whether you have experienced any adverse events when using a cellular dermal matrix graft. It is known as it uh, hydrophilicity, and during the time placed under a thin flap, it might cause some of the complications. I wonder whether your personal and clinical experience is associated with some of them. We didn't have any certain adverse reaction, but I think it's good at least to wait in saline like 10 minutes, even better 15 minutes, to let it rehydrate with the saline. Also, in thin tissues, when we are doing releasing incisions after mucogingival line, we should be very attentive because tissue is very thin. Even when we are repositioning coronally and using the sutures, we used 5-0 for standardization, but now I think it's better to use 6-0, even 7-0 with magnification, especially in thin tissues. Concerning the ADM also, I think we should cover completely the graft for bad aesthetics, for not letting the graft to be resorbed because the, the part that we leave not covered is resorbing after two or three weeks. Also we're prescribing the antibiotics, oral greens. Unless we do everything by the protocol, I think we should not expect anything as adverse reaction. The same, uh, I didn't report, I didn't uh, pay attention in articles. Uh, certain reactions, adverse reactions by the IDM. Okay, thank you very much. And another comment, uh, you have received uh, and achieved very good results even with the coronally advanced flap which uh, treated yes. multiple gingival recessions within biotype which is a kind of really good achievement. Thank you for your presentation. You, I would like to announce the following presentation, I would like to call Dr. Rebelle from Munich, Germany, to present us tunnel technique versus coronally advanced flat with enamel matrix derivative 